fast paced. Everyone talks about this is the shit talking game, and I, I never really put much into it until I was actually playing with buddies. Oh in the yeah, room. yeah, it and is. And then it does. It turns into exactly what everyone's been talking about, where you want to talk about how they got owned or screwed or stealing the flag from them at the last second or shoving each other. You know, when someone scores. Right, and, right. Now that you get power ups that can obviously stop your opponent, you've got the magnet gun which will draw uh, draw the criminal to you. You've got a missile which will basically track people. You've got this large uh, hammer that will bounce people up in the air, and if they're carrying the criminal, it will launch them out. I believe there's one other weapon that I'm forgetting about. Um, but you got turbo boost, and and you know what, Floors? This to me is like a party game that doesn't make you feel gay while you're playing it. You know, <laughs> if you, if if your buddies walk in on you and you're playing Mario Party, that's the kind of thing that you you know you're like, oh, I I I was playing Mario Party. You know, your buddies come over, you're playing Calling All Cars, they want to jump in immediately. So it it's a party game for the masses that doesn't make you look like a gay wad. Basically, you know, it's funny is that when I saw screenshots of it, I was afraid of that, that it'd be too freaking cutesy. But the gameplay's so tight that you don't worry that it has a, you know, a cell shaded, almost cartoon nature to it because right. it's so much fun once you get into it. Right. So, uh, you know, other things that I like about it, obviously, the four player split screen is fantastic. It works flawlessly. It doesn't feel like you're lo you're viewing too small of a screen. You still have the same sort of field of view, especially if you're playing it on a large screen television. And, you know, I, I mean, it, I guess the, the proper way to do this is we both know what the verdict is for us. But is there anything about this game that you didn't like? Um, I don't hear, hear one of the things I don't like is that. Two of the maps, it only comes with four maps, which right. can get played over pretty easy. And two of the four maps, or maybe the snow map especially, I hate. Like, one of the maps I hate, other people love, and that I'd get upset when I'd play that and almost drop out and start another game to right. find out, uh, on a map that I enjoyed, um, is that it, it can get repetitive quickly. If you're playing by yourself, it's not a game that I think holds its interest. I agree. I thought I was going to play it for a long time by myself, and I discovered I didn't. But whenever I have someone that comes over, right, I then find it becomes that I love a new it. game, right. And one of the things I do like is that two players can play split screen online against two other players, right. So right. it's not just me and a buddy playing against each other. We can actually play against each other, plus throw two others in the mix. And I love that. I absolutely love it. And and honestly, that's becoming a trend for a lot of new multiplayer games. Obviously, the Halo 3 beta has that. Um, uh, the upcoming Warhawk game, SOCOM, is supposed to have that as well. So I, I'm happy to see that that's now becoming a viable option because, of course, that's the first question I always have. Well, can we split screen it and play together online? Uh, well, now you can. You know, more games, more publishers, more companies are starting to catch on to that. So let's go ahead and give our verdict on this. Uh, I, I think you probably could already take a wild guess. Um, you know, we, we've looked at a few other games on the PlayStation Store that we've told you not to buy. But this one, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely worth the money. Nine ninety nine. our verdict from Epileptic Gaming is if you own a PS3, this is most certainly a game that you should buy. Calling All Cars for nine ninety nine. it may not offer the most fantastic single-player experience, but that's not what the game is all about. It's all about getting together with your buddies, talking mad shit, you know, rotating the, la the person who's on the bottom of the totem pole out and letting a new guy come in. Your girlfriend will play it. Your wife will play it. This is a game for everyone, and multiplayer is really where it shines. If you're looking for that extra something on the PS3, and I know you guys all are, are, calling all cars is at least a step in the right direction. Force anything you else you want to add about the game? I just want to say I'm absolutely pleased, more pleased than I've ever been with an online purchase. With this and game. and honestly, the all the the only game that I've seen in the foreseeable future that could dethrone this one in terms of the look, in terms of the play style, is probably Pain. Now, you know, we won't know until we actually get to play it, but based off of what I've seen, what I've read, you know, the game looks phenomenal. It's going to be a download on the PlayStation Short, just like Calling All Cars, and I hope that this encourages people uh, to make more games that are a little bit more robust than your standard, like, jetpack refueled on the Xbox Live, three si you know, on the 360. Or, um, you know, I mean, simple works. Look at Geometry Wars, but at the same time, sometimes simple is just not enough. Look at jetpack refueled. So, uh, this is a good way and i hope to see more games like this so 
Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, to Command and Conquer 3. Before we give our scores, we had a chance to speak with Raj, who is the executive producer of Command and Conquer 3. And many of the things that we've talked about here on the show, that we've debated about on the show, have been can you successfully take a PC franchise, especially a game type, RTS, real-time strategy, that is almost exclusive to PCs and port it on the console. Well, guys uh, guys that are big fans of Battle for Middle Earth 2 would already tell you yes, but now the Command & Conquer 3 is released, a lot more attention is going to the RTSs on the console. Let's roll this clip. Let's watch this interview with Raj. This is from our visit, uh, la was it last week or two weeks ago, to the EA offices. Uh, thank you, Aaron Kaufman, by the way, and thank you, Raj, and Aaron uh, was also there. Uh, we appreciate uh, your hospitality having us in let's roll this clip when it's over we will discuss our scores and then we are going to treat you to a live game of command and conquer 3 on the 360 played by our own dj rome to show you just how well this game can translate let's check this out I'm Raj Joshi, producer on Command & Conquer 3, Tiberium Wars uh, for 360. Uh, worked on BFME 2, uh, bringing RTS to the console, and this is our, our next iteration. So, really excited to show this game. The main thing is really getting the controls to feel good. You know, uh, CNC 3 is all about fast and fluid gameplay, getting in there, being able to build up units and getting in the fight quickly, and we wanted to make sure that the control scheme is something that helps us do that rather than act as any kind of hindrance. And I think we pretty much nailed it this time. You can go play your uh, PC RTSs with your keyboard and mouse, but we really want to kind of make the transition and get people more uh, accustomed to it. Plus, you know, you have all these people that have been used to playing uh, our, uh, console games for so many years. You know, you put the controller in their hands, everything feels really natural to them. We want to really leverage that, bring RTS to an entirely new audience. So. For us, we really kind of want to forge a new home for RTS on the console and hope to see it start kind of evolving from there. Yeah, RTS is a really interesting proposition on console. It's something that we weren't sure if it was going to be uh, something that people wanted to do, especially with console players that didn't really understand what RTS was. We didn't know if this is something they were going to pick up and understand the core compulsions. With BFME 2 and now CNC 3, especially with the demo, um, we're really seeing that people are really into it, really picking it up. We got great feedback, and what we were hoping to see is really RTS on console establishing itself as a new genre breaking away, there's a lot of discussion, can you play against the PC, you know, is it fast as, as fast as the PC, you know, is it going to be something where we're going to see the, the two worlds coming together, and what I really see is us kind of building RTSs specifically for the console, and really kind of branching out, you know, going with the controller as being our, our core control method, getting away from the mouse and the keyboard, and starting to build around that. And we have a lot, of, a lot of testing that we're doing, a lot of cool innovations that we're working on, so I really think that RTS on console is something that's here to stay and something that's going to branch out away from what we've been seeing on the PC. The closer we get to the control scheme feeling really intuitive and natural to people, then I think that's the way we're kind of bridging the gap. But, but again, I do think that console and the PC RTS world should kind of diverge from each other. And I, the same way that we saw first-person shooters, you know, nobody thought first-person shooters were going to work on the console, the control scheme, and as we see you know, with the Medal of Honor series and, and Halo, um, you know, now first-person shooters are dominant in a way on, on console. So I think it's just a matter of people getting ramped up on it, and we're seeing tons of people playing the demo, and now hopefully we'll be seeing them playing the game too. You know, there's a lot of non-believers about, um, you know, RTS working on a console. But the moment they get their hands on the controller, uh, as we saw today with uh, with a couple of you guys, you know, you realize that we've been holding these console controllers for years. You know, you you put your hands on it, you immediately know how to move the camera. All the buttons are in a place where you don't have to look at it. So the cool thing is like seeing the slow but steady adoption rate of people who feel like, okay, RTS should only be played on the on the PC, and then they get their hands on the controller and start to realize that it's actually not that difficult, and it's actually 
in a lot of ways a quicker kind of ramp up time. The other cool part is that um, PC guys, uh, even when I play on the PC, I'm using the directional keys. I am not rotating my camera at all. You know, I'll be scrolling around, but I, I'm always north up and just keep everything in the same orientation. The moment you get your hands on the console controller, you start rotating the camera. And that for me makes it really interesting because I do like the games where I can get in there, you know, you can zoom in on your units, like pan around them. And especially for people watching, uh, this is going to be a game played in the living room. Uh, chances are, you know,